There is our first disparity at number five. Ooh. Cynthia, you have the Texans at five as they get set to travel to take on the Chiefs. And Dan, you have them dead last. Who I will to start. Why are the Texans dead last in your power rankings? I guess I couldn't shake the entire picture of that Saturday game, the first 40 minutes of game time where Bill O'Brien is asleep at the switch. Deshaun Watson was also not himself and not performing. And then they go off in those, you know, in the third and fourth quarter in overtime. In overtime yeah. But it's still barely beating the Bills. And as much as I do love and respect Deshaun Watson, I just think they're number eight because to me they're the least likely team to win the Super Bowl. Okay. Cynthia? Well, you have a couple of things here. Number one so, road team. N- number one road team. So ultimately, J.J. Watt, he was on a little bit of a limited pitch count last game. Seems like he should potentially be more impactful going forward. You get Will Fuller back from every report that we've seen. So that makes a huge difference for what's going on there. And then the fact that Deshaun Watson is just taking it into his own, like, he's, th- there's a, this is the most rushing yards, most rushing attempts he's ever had in a game so far. This is, he just kind of taking the team on his shoulders. Like, we're going we're to do this. The Will Fuller point is both a good point, but one that deserves an asterisk in the sense that how do we know that Will Fuller stays on the field? Even Bill O'Brien, the last time Fair. his most recent injury, uh, came out and frustrated said he's just we don't know when we're ever going to have him on the field does with that groin injury allow him to be will fuller he's a sprinter yeah. um the one thing that jumped out at me that i found interesting was that uh, each of you have the seahawks very low uh you have them at seven dan and cynthia you have them dead last the seahawks i mean who's they were playing? almost a one seed they were oh. almost a one seed but then they almost lost to josh mccown and an eagles team that was how many players did they even have dressed? Like, I, they were talking about how Greg Ward Jr. was would be the quarterback if Josh McCown got hurt. So there was that moment. There was that. That that actually did happen. That's so a real thing. Ultimately, in this one, there's so many injuries, and that game was a mess. And when you have that many injuries, you're that depleted at that many positions. Yes, Russell Wilson is a game changer. Absolutely. But he doesn't play, you know, all of the other positions. He, he certainly does. doesn't play on defense. He kind of does. He doesn't play defense. <laughs> I, maybe I'm just angry because if they would have nailed the last game of Wild Card Weekend, you could have said, oh, that was the best Wild Card Weekend ever. And yeah. instead, it was a sloppy game. And it really was with the Eagles, the Seahawks essentially beat, and it was a road win in the playoffs, and the place was jumping and all that. But they essentially beat a week four preseason version of the Eagles by the time things were said and done. And the fact that Philadelphia came so close to potentially being in possession to to tie the game in multiple instances in the second half. It was just like, come on, Seahawks. You should be destroying this team. And they didn't. Yeah, I look, I, you've said it. I'm not betting against Russell Wilson. This has been that team all season long. They have not blown teams out, and it doesn't matter the level of competition. If it's the 49ers, uh, it's been a one-score game. If it's the Cardinals, it's been a one-score game. It's just been their nature. And the reason why they win 12 games in the regular season is because of that guy. And it, it's just, hey, keep it tight, and guess what? I'm the best player in the NFL, and I'm going to go win us a game. And, and that's why it would not surprise me in the least if this is the team that ends up getting that win uh, against a squad that was on a bye, just because that's that's kind of what happens when you have a player of the caliber of Russell Wilson. Who, it helps who they're getting as well, and I'm, I, I'm sure we're going to get to that. But I don't say Seattle has no chance this week. I'm just looking bigger picture. If you even got past divisional, yep. is that do they win a t- NFC title game? Do they? Right. I mean, so think about do it. They if, beat they, the if they get the 49ers, do they beat the Ravens? Well, no. I'm just saying if they if they get the Niners, now you have the Niners for a third time, a team you know very well. So okay. I think it, if they do get out of this, it so does kind of present it, an interesting. But do path. they do they beat the Chiefs or the Ravens? I, but just, once you're there, hey, who knows? They're at eight. But I think eight's I don't low. Think they're Money, you got me thinking low. on this a little bit. Oh, yeah, here we go. They get the W in Wild Card Weekend. <laughs> they get a nice divisional round matchup right. against a Green Bay team that nobody really believes in. Right. And then if San Francisco advances, just like you said. Third so matchup. So the, there is a path there, but just a lot of things have to go their way. They do. They I do have to play better. I don't know seven or eight. I feel yeah. like that's the five team. Like, okay, this is the one road team that I would circle and say they got the best. There's right. a path. Toughest. Opposite test on the divisional weekend for the home team the four teams that got the bye which one has the toughest test I guess I'm going to get it started and I'll just build on what I was just discussing with the Seahawks the Packers Um, because of all those teams and as much as I respect Deshaun Watson and uh, think he is one of the most special players left in the playoffs this is the one guy I don't want to see uh, on a team that has already won a Super Bowl that has already been to two that has been a ton of in a ton of tight contests all season long and has won their fair share of them. Um, 
yeah, they're not running the ball. You know, that's been a serious issue for a team <laughs> whose identity is to run the ball. But I, I feel like their defense takes too much incoming. You know, I mean, you still have Jadavian Clowney. You still have Bobby Wagner, the best middle linebacker in the league. Their secondary is not bad. I mean, th that is a KJ good, is good... KJ Wright. I mean, that is a good team. And it would not surprise me in the least if they went into Lambeau and got that win. I definitely think that that one's a close one. But one that doesn't seem like a very close game on paper... But I'm keeping an eye on I'm actually looking at the Chiefs. I think it's interesting to see, look, look, Juan Thornhill, their safety, he's gone. They lost him to IR. We haven't seen how their defense is going to adjust without Juan Thornhill and with Will Fuller being back for the Texans. This could be one of those things where if the Texans jump off to this quick lead, it could be difficult for them to come back. It's either going to be boom or bust, right? They're either, in, in, in my estimation, it's either going to be like a 14-point win or like a, you know, they lose. They Do you know what I'm prison. saying? Like a big, like, boomer bust in that. You know, because they, you don't know who you're getting with the Texans. I know that teams don't have a Joey Bosa and a Derwin James, but if you watch Week 17, you know, that is a Gus Bradley-led defense, uh, you know, that for both games, Mexico City and Week 17, they kind of have the formula for how to slow down Pat Mahomes, how to check Travis Kelsey, and you look, and it was a ridiculously two-missed tackle, 83-yard touchdown run by Damian Williams, and a special team's 104-yard touchdown by McCole Hardman that gave them that win. So there is that blueprint there, and J.J. Watt can play that role, and Merciless can play the Bosa role. And the are the biggest role. favorites this week at home. Biggest favorites, just to beware, right? Yeah. There are also like the ghosts last that week. are flying around Arrowhead a little bit. this time of year. Ghosts. I put faith Spooky. or put stock into that. I will throw out uh, the Niners, uh, because the opponent would spook me a little bit. Because And it's funny how much things change. We're sitting in these same chairs last week, and the Vikings looked like a, te a dead team walking, uh, going in. In fact, on the power rankings, the Saints I had at number two. That that was a great look for me. Uh, they're now at home. But look at, watch out for Dalvin Cook. I want to put him Cook. at one in the NFC. I don't think there's yeah. anything wrong with that. Dalvin Cook is a guy that what I really saw in this game was his numbers didn't pop out at you because he averaged three and a half yards a carry, but he was moving like Cook again. He was a huge part of the offense. And what is the real weakness on the Niners is their rush defense. They Specifically but, outside the tackles where he was actually pretty efficient last week. All but four games this year, uh, the Niners allowed at least 100 yards on the ground. They, get, they should get Quan Alexander back, which would be a huge lift. He's a monster in the run game. But watch out, a Vikings team that has juice now, that believes in itself, a little Eli Giants vibe potentially. You get that one win and things start rolling. The Niners could have a real tough test. Yeah, what's interesting is as beat up as their secondary was, that the Saints of all teams, you know, what, 16 touchdowns, no picks, 135 pass already Cute. last four. Michael Thomas, and you can't take advantage of what looked to be their weakness. No Mackenzie Alexander, Xavier Rhodes, who's been a shell of himself the last season and a half. And he got hurt, too. In the and the, and the he game. got hurt. And yeah. then, so now we're going to do our playoff quarterback draft. There is no Drew, Drew Brees to select, but there is a Kirk Cousins. So uh, I believe you called it, Dan. You said, I got first. So you go ahead and get first pick. I did, and I really, I didn't want to overthink this. You don't want to get too cute in a fantasy draft or a real draft or this type of draft. So I will go with Lamar Jackson, who will be the league MVP, who is doing things that we've never seen at the quarterback position. And am I a little bit nervous about the 20-day layoff? I am a little bit nervous about that. That's not what uh, I'd be nervous about. But uh, everything else to me uh, feels like it's well set up for this guy to Lazy pick, up. pick. Why? What's wrong with Lamar Jackson? Hey, playoffs ain't regular season, oh, brother. Please. They're That's the playoffs. Silly. They are the playoffs. Uh, and, and this is for one game. We That's are, your this analysis? Is, this is not the whole Super Bowl. This is... No, I just... I think about what happened to Lamar Jackson in the close of the regular season in 2018, and then what happened Ancient in the history. what happened in the wild card round. Ancient so, history. All right, different player. I'm going to go with Patrick Mahomes, which I'm surprised you didn't. Good with that. Pick. You're good with that. Absolutely. As long as money's good with it, then good with that's that. all the analysis Please. you need. So why need. Pat Mahomes? Look, when it, you said. And win. by the way, we, this is not because of the matchup. This is nothing. No. This is just quarterback. This is quarterback we believe will win a game. Equals win a game. It's not Chiefs well, versus I really Texans. Screwed it's not Ravens with this versus Lamar Titans. Jackson pick. What am I going to do? Well, we'll see. <laughs> so, anything else, or is it my turn? It's your turn. All right, you're both dumb. <laughs> How do you not take Russell Wilson? He's won a Super oh, Bowl. Stop it. He has already won a Super Bowl. He has proven in playoff atmosphere he will overcome He's lost all the obstacles. Super Bowl, too, but, you know, I guess. Oh, now you're going to hold that. looseness. Listen, hey, <laughs> hey, have you ever seen the Jets in the Super Bowl? <laughs> oh, now it's It would have been nice if they would have just made one, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a guy you that's got hardware. Court, money. A guy who's, uh, who, who's a perennial MVP candidate. You're, he puts his okay. team on his shoulders. Okay. All yes. right. Keep going. I am going to keep going because I got the snake. Right? Deshaun Watson. 
Hey, wear it, Bill O'Brien. Uh, that's a good pick. Look what I can do. And I am, as Dabo Money, Swinney I hate said. You, but that's a good pick. God was in a good mood the day he made Deshaun Watson. You're darn right he was, Dabo. Wow, your southern accent he is, is something to behold. The Michael Jordan of football, and he's going to prove it yet again. And you, you detailed that, it perfectly. He's going to roll into Kansas. Eh, maybe he's not going to. How about Dabo Sweeney? What was said is kind of one interview at some point before the draft, during the draft process a few years back. That is going to become, to me, because I do see him as a Hall of Fame level player. He might have a Super Bowl in him at some point. That will be connected to him forever. Both guys in yeah. a good way. But I think for, here's the thing, for Deshaun, it works because of what he did at Clemson, right? It's like, hey, this guy put together one of the most magical championship games ever, one of the most iconic pass plays ever to win a game against what looked to be an un unstoppable foe in Alabama. So he's always kind of got that in his back pocket mm -hmm. as uh, something to lean on if it doesn't pan out. Okay, right, so you said for your Russell Wilson. So I went Lamar Jackson. You are, he went Lamar Jackson, you went Pat Mahomes, yep. I went Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, now you have a fifth pick. The entire argument you made for Russell Wilson yeah. was that he always puts the team on his shoulders, right. he always makes the play, got he's it. got a ring, Right. and then you picked Deshaun Watson. I did. After that. So I'm going to go with Aaron Rodgers. That's fine. That's and old. just insert everything oh. you said about... I don't want that. He's too cranky for me. I don't want him on my team. Oh. Yeah, but, you know, I, don't, I don't care I don't how cranky he is. I want to win games. I one time saw a Detroit Lions game where he threw a Hail Mary that just cut yeah. the heart out of my little Lions. You know why he did that? Because he was holding he can. onto the ball for 20 seconds. Because he Get can. Get rid of the ball. Because he can. He better hope Aaron He better hope Aaron Jones does for him what Terrell Davis did for John Elway. That's the only way he's winning a Super Bowl. By the way, a stat about, and this isn't all on Aaron Rodgers, but he played all 16 games this year. He was healthy all year. And they were never higher than 17th in the league in offense all season. They finished 18th. They were the middle of, of the pack, as you they can get. They got a good defense. On the wrong side of that. They've got a good defense. All right. You got the last pick. I, no, I got a double snake, baby. What? I'm snaking, baby. How, how do you get a snake? I got to be able to get one of those. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. It's whoever's left. Jimmy G is the sixth overall pick. And I like it as kind of like a wild card. People overlooking what he can do. Uh, uh, because he's shown some magic. And who's more battle-tested than Jimmy G after what the Niners went through in December with all those premium matchups and, and every game, he's not perfect and, and, and he'll make a mistake every once in a while that makes you shake your head. But I really do think Garoppolo is the type of guy with the type of makeup that could really step up in January. I'm really looking forward to that plot line. And then Snake, uh, so there's only two guys to two choose guys from. Two guys left, yeah. Tannehill and Cousins. And I'm not going with the guy that washed out of Miami. I'm going with Kirk Cousins, who washed moves out of up. Miami. He just this, beat the Patriots. If we did, well, well, somebody beat I him. Mean, His name was Derrick Henry. Yeah, 75 yards. Um, I will say that a win. week ago, if we did the same exercise, uh, Cousins would have been at the bottom of the list. He moves up a little bit here uh, because of those two big throws yeah. uh, in overtime, the perfect 43 yard strike to Thielen, and then the Kyle Rudolph fade, which yes, maybe it's PI, but that's a well-placed ball in a big spot. And yes, they had like 13 yards in their previous three possessions in uh, the fourth quarter and blew a 10 point lead. Let's not forget that, but Cousins has a little juice now, so he's my pick. I All feel right, like that was the official. most caveats ever. So Ryan Tannehill, welcome to my team. I love your play action. I'm not going to give you any caveats. I don't care if Derrick Henry's there. It's the eighth pick, and I'm getting a guy who I think is undervalued at this role. Well, I would, welcome to my team. I think much my like my fake what, team that does absolutely nothing for anyone. So congratulations, <laughs> whatever. Ryan Tannehill. Congratulations. What Dan said about uh, about Kirk Cousins, I think, uh, applies here with Tannehill as well. And and he would have likely been the the seventh or the sixth pick if he had done what he had done in the final, you know, seven games where he was the starter in the regular right. season. But he's coming off a 75 yard, you know, pick one touchdown. Still, performance, so it's kind of hard. Beating the Patriots is a thing. It is. Well, Most he was on the team is. that won. Right. I'll give him that. You got Derrick Henry. Give the ball to Derrick Henry. Come on, stay now. out the way. He threw one good pass, the touchdown pass. Right. That's all they needed. That is all, all right. they needed. Well, you, you're good. giving Kirk Cousins two, and they blew a lead. Well, Kirk, he's got juice. I, I think it's more. You, you like feel, that. Do you feel like the, the Titans won that game, or did they catch a few breaks along the way that helped them? They I need know. to be more all balanced I on know offense. Is, I want to know. Oh, so we start with the Buffalo Bills. You saw the uh, dejected look on Josh Allen's face. Moving forward, Bills. And we know there's going to be some flux on those Patriots uh, and how they will fare in the AFC East. So you forward. say dejected, but I see the next level of that, which is like the guy who saw too much in war face. Mm. And it just seemed like he was on another that planet. Like shell shocked. He was on tilt for most of the second half there once the Texans began their comeback. And I would just be nervous if I was a Bills fan uh, that that could be kind of ah, his legacy. I hope not. 
Well, I think if Brian Dable stays, then it's going to be good for them. I think that they have something kind of special here, and they have a nice a, opportunity in this division. I don't think you're going to have the Sam Darnold getting mono again, and I don't think that you're going to have Miami being so bad. So I, th I think this is a division that could be up and coming. So I, I think you're. I think they're in decent Does shape. Does it feel like a Mitch Trubisky no. Chicago year three no. situation? I don't not, think so. No, not the player. I'm talking about where. You, as a rookie, you flash. No, I think that's year totally two, you fair. Improve. Year two, you make Year the three, there's going to be a lot higher expectations yes, in Buffalo. Sure. Is Josh Allen capable totally of fair. going next level? I think, that is a, I think that is a viable analogy. And for Josh Allen, I just wonder if Duke Williams could catch a ball um, in critical moments. So there were two separate occasions on third down that Duke could not hold on to balls. Sure. If we're having a different conversation, just right. because there are so few opportunities where Allen throws an accurate right. ball that's catchable, well, that you've got to take advantage of. How about, how about Duke of. Williams is an outsnapping Cole Beasley in the right. biggest game of the season? Beasley was a security blanket for the kid. Uh, second up, the Eagles. How do we feel about the Eagles moving forward? Cynthia, you start. I love their coach. I love Doug Peterson. I think they have a really good thing going. Who was playing this season? They need to get a lot healthier. They. I, you know, a lot of people are saying they do so much with so little, and it's so true. Like, the number of times that I had to, like, redo everything for the Eagles with injury concerns. And by the way, they were happening mid-game. It's not like you even had a full week to really figure it out, right? Like, oh, well, this drive we have this person at quarterback and these weapons. Well, they, everything. So I feel better about them next season moving forward. They just need to get a lot healthier. Let's look healthier. at the division. I mean, I feel good about them in that yeah. division. It was a, lo a lost season, and, and the Carson Wentz injury is just so unfair, cruel uh, yeah. hand from the football. Gods, but they also need to get better on the roster, especially in the skill level positions, because even healthy, do not count on Deshaun Jackson to come back next year. You got to go get and Alshon better Jeffrey weapons. is almost always hurt. It feels yes. like, well, hey, it's like good when's news. Alshon Jeffrey gonna be hurt? It's again? a wide receiver draft. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. Wide receiver so. draft. So go get some help there. Obviously, they have their tight ends covered. Uh, all right, the Saints. Dan, just the crushing loss. I mean, I just I still can't. It's why football and sports are so great because when you think you know everything, the opposite tends to happen. Uh, but hold on to the football. How how do you let this game get away? How do you let this season get away? Because there's not going to be too many more for Sean Payton and Drew Brees, and this felt like maybe their last best chance. We'll see. Hey, after what Taysom Hill was doing out there, give me more Taysom Hill. And I love Drew Brees. You know that I love me some Drew Brees. Uh, but man. Taysom Hill was was the jolt that it looked like that team needed throughout the course that of that game. That fumble by Breeze it after Taysom brutal. Hill was going to take the game over, it looked it like. Was brutal. I mean, you talk about all-time air out of the balloon moments. Yeah. Uh, all right, Patriots, Cynthia. Best for last. Whew. Okay, I do think that – I I think that Tom we're seeing Tom back, yes or no? I think Tom's back. Okay. But I, Zeus, Tom back, yes or no? Yes. Okay. I think it's messy. I think we might be seeing the unraveling. They got a really, it is a wide receiver heavy class, but they also need to address a number of other things. And O-line health. Yeah, O-line, probably the biggest one if you're gonna keep Tom, right? right. So and these granted it was injuries. If they have guys that are healthy, you feel a lot better about that offensive line. They just couldn't stay healthy. And maybe some tight end help. These, right. are, these are some things that are like fundamentals of their offense. If Josh McDaniel stays, we, we are hearing rumors that he could be interviewing for other job, right. the one remaining job open. This, uh, I'm a little more concerned. I'm putting I'm putting up my little flag on that one. Do the Patriots win the AFC East next year? No. The Jets. You say yes? Oh, no. So the Jets are going to win the AFC Oh, Jets. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh no, no, no. That wasn't a yes. That was a Jets. I say Jets anyway. Tom Brady. Hey. The I, Patriots get slaughtered. Act like a professional. I can't. Leave it's the not, fan ass at home, it, okay? Can't do it. Can't Jeez. do it. Jeez. Um, uh, Tom Brady, with. the Patriots get slaughtered on the cap if they let Brady That's walk. What That's I'm a saying. factor. I, my guess is that what they'll do is, because Robert Kraft's already on record now to Peter King, I want him back with the Patriots or to retire, that they will try to build weapons around him, give him a better supporting cast, because they did a bad job this year hey. helping out the old man and take one more run at it. That's my guess. They're going to have to scratch a big check. I got news for you, and that's where it gets interesting. The, the, is, the cap situation determines a lot yeah. of it. That's why maybe the Jets are a little, a little hey, dicey. Geez.